Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SA Accounting Academy. Uh, here's a short clip on one of our previous webinars. I hope that you really do enjoy it. Good day to you and welcome to this CPD learning activity presented by Anton van Wijk and hosted by the SA Accounting Academy. The topic today that we are exploring is the IFRS for SMEs, Section 12, Other Financial Instruments Issues, and then Section two, uh, 22, Liabilities and Equity. All right, so in Section 12, uh, as I've indicated in the previous webinar that dealt with Section 11, uh, Section 11 deals with basic financial instruments, whereas Section 12 deals with more complex financial instruments issues. I would just say it's not necessarily more complex. I would just actually think that it, it's a bit more unusual, a bit more unknown. And that's why I find it actually especially interesting seeing that it's not your run of the mill uh, financial instruments. In section 22, very important, the issuers of financial instruments, uh, be it financial instruments or just normal instruments such as equity instruments, uh, have to decide whether those instruments are liabilities or equity instruments on the credit side. And that is what section 22 of the IFRS for SMEs actually helps us to determine. So before we start with the webinar, some background information about SAAA that you can read up on, uh, the rewards that you can potentially be entitled to from the reward partners of SA Accounting Academy, uh, some background information about myself, Anton van Wijk, uh, just some housekeeping regarding the webinar. Should you have to leave the webinar early or you cannot complete it completely or whatever, for whatever reason, the recording and the presentation slides will be available within your profile, and that is how you can access them. And then remember, depending on your designation, you can either update your CPD reflective plan if you're a SICA member or associate, or you can record your CPD hours uh, based on the input-based approach with some other professional bodies. All right, so please make sure that you can access that and update all of the information there. Just lastly, the disclaimer and the copyright that you need to take note of. And then also, should you want to ask any questions, please make uh, use of the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. And then if the question is a bit too involved uh, for a chat box, then you can always email me at anton at accountingacademy.co.za and then I will provide you with some insight regarding the topic and the content of this webinar. All right, so welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be dealing with section 12 and section 22. So firstly, I just want to revisit some of the basic principles of section 11 without wasting too much time on them, because as you know, we had a separate webinar of two hours dealing with section 11 and the basics of financial instruments. So it's absolutely not my goal to revise the entire section 11 today. But where necessary, where section 12 refers to section 11, I just quickly want to just refresh your mind uh, and or, or refresh your memory and those that didn't attend the webinar on section 11 that you at least just know what it is that we're talking about. Section 12, we'll uh, then delve into some more detail there on other financial instruments issues and then subsequent, uh, sorry, uh, uh, section 22 on uh, the equity versus liabilities part as well. All right, so regarding section 12, if we start off with section 12 and just do an introduction there, we can see that the scope of sections 11 and 12 Together, those sections deal with recognition and derecognition, measurement and disclosure of financial instruments. Section 11 dealing with basic financial instruments that are relevant to all entities that have financial instruments. All right, so Section 11 is always the default section that you consult when you are dealing with a financial instrument. Section 12 deals with more complex 
financial instruments, I would say more interesting financial instruments, and must be considered to ensure correct inclusion or exclusion from the scope. So it's important that we always make sure that we understand the scope of Section 12 to decide whether, whether Section 12 shouldn't perhaps also be applied to the particular financial instrument. But in reality, I would say that 80% of the time, Section 11 will be the one that applies to financial instruments of SMEs. All right, so I just want to refresh your memory on the accounting policy choice, which is applicable to Section 11 and Section 12. Any entity that has financial instruments must make a choice. They are either going to apply Sections 11 and 12 in the first SMEs in full, or they're going to apply the old version IS-39 from full IFRS, dealing with the recognition and measurement of financial instruments, plus the disclosure requirements of Sections 11 and 12 in the IFRS for SMEs. Now, why this is important is because you are given a choice on how to deal with your financial instruments. I do not understand which SME would go and apply IS-39. I think that would be more a case of an entity that has been applying IS-39 that doesn't wish to switch over to Sections 11 and 12 per the IFRS for SMEs. But it would make a lot more sense to actually apply Sections 11 and 12 because they are simpler than the previous IS-39. Also take into account that in full IFRS, IFRS 9 has now fully superseded IS-39. So there is still a record that is kept of IS-39 for purposes of SMEs applying IS-39. So this part hasn't been updated to say that you must choose between Section 11 and 12 and IFRS 9. You still choose between Section 11 and 12 in full or the old IS-39 that used to be the, the standard dealing with recognition and measurement of financial instruments in full IFRS. And I just want to indicate to you there, seeing that IS-39 only deals with recognition and measurement, the disclosure in the notes will still have to be done in terms of Section 11 and 12 anyway. So why this is important? Seeing that it's an accounting policy choice, this choice must appear in your accounting policy notes at the beginning of your notes to the financial statements. You must make this choice and then also take into account when you decide to make a change from one option to the other option that would represent a change in accounting policy and then Section 10 of the IFRS for SMEs would have to be applied. All right, so those are the consequences of this whole choice that is given to you. Now, just as a refresher again, Section 11, what are basic financial instruments? We said the first category is cash. Everyone understands what cash is. The second main category is a debt instrument that meets the prescribed conditions. And those prescribed conditions basically deal with the types of cash flow and the variability of the cash flow that can take place in the instrument. And as long as the instrument has, you know, a cash flow that basically relates to payments of principal and interest, and there's not too much variability in those cash flows, that means uncertainty that we really cannot estimate the cash flow until a specific event that is beyond the control of the holder of the instrument. Uh, that you know that that such an event will then determine the cash flow, then the debt instrument will satisfy the you know the, the the definition of a basic financial instrument, and the reason for that being that for our debt instruments that actually meet these prescribed conditions of simplicity, actually, we apply the amortized cost model to subsequently measure them, and that is why. We want the cash flows and the time period and everything else, the types of cash flows. We want them to be known and we want them not to be too variable because otherwise applying the amortized cost model is going to be senseless.
I hope that you enjoyed that video. For more of our webinar videos, go to www.accountingacademy.co.za. Thank you and have a lovely day.